But Paul, before we go on, I just want to ask this question that popped into my mind, and that is, I know um, what I kind of I end want to do, but I want to say it right in front. You don't believe that a man should force himself on his wife. No, you, you don't. You don't believe that a man should beat his wife and take advantage of his wife, right? No, no, that, 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 that's a no, no. You know, but most times these things happen because of provoking on either side. Men don't want to walk away, or the women want to, don't want to walk away because both parties have been abused these days, mm -hmm. both the man and the wife. It's just that there's more heard of the women being abused than men are being abused. But both parties, they are victim of abuse. But, you know, here again, like Jesus, although the abuse must come, we must still be loving and kind. I think about when Judas betrayed Christ. He said, you betrayed me with a kiss, friend. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of us call our enemies our friend? And just like Jesus, we must have the same mindset, realizing that just like how when he was nailed upon the cross for you and I over 2,000 years ago, the Bible said he uttered another word. Simply because he is filled with the spirit of his heavenly father. And based on that, he said nothing out of the way that would cause them to think that he was not the savior of the world. And even there at the cross, some men turned to him that day based on the way he conducted himself in the closing moments of his life. Seeing Brother Paul that um, this gift of marriage to for married couples came from the Creator himself. Who would be, would you say, is trying to get between them and trying to, to, to do all this manipulation? Well, I hear a lot of people, they will say it's the government, they will say that it's man, but I believe that it's the devil himself. He is working behind the scenes. And, you know, the government and the officials, they, they really want to do this because they want things to get better. But we know based on the Word of God, it will not get better. And I believe that it truly is the devil that is working behind the scenes. According to John 10, 10 to 11, the thief come not but to destroy and to this not the, the thief come not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they may have life, says Jesus, and they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd will give his life for the sheep. So there we have it. It is the devil himself. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy the things that God has placed in creation over 6,000 years ago. And he's trying to through so many different avenues. We have reached a time in our life when men want to marry men, and women want to marry women, and they think it's quite all right. But here again, they're fulfilling the words of our Savior because he said to us in the book of Luke, as it was in the days of Noah, and as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be when he returned. And here we are, 2,000 years later, at the predicted words of Christ, we find ourselves in a final crisis with these things being fulfilled with human beings. Sad to say, Brother Julian, it's not being fulfilled with the birds and the bees, but it's being fulfilled with human beings, those who Christ paid an ultimate price for on Calvary's cross. But Paul, why do you think the devil is working behind the scenes um, to push and implement this uh, mar um, marital rape law. But it, there's no doubt in my mind, Brother June, that the devil knows the scriptures. And he knows that in Genesis 2, 18, Jesus said it's not good for man to be alone. The Lord God said it is not good for man to be alone. And I, God, will make him man I help me. And who is that help me? That help me we all know is Eve herself. And he made that by taking a rib out of Adam to make Eve. And when he presented Eve to Adam, Adam says, surely this is born of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And here today the devil knows this. He knows that the beautiful relationship that men and women can have once they communicate with each other and put God being the chief shepherd in between them. See, Christ must be the head. And once he is the head, he will guide all the emotions and all the thoughts of the heart and make sure that we do things that are pleasing in his sight and not man. I hear you, Brother Paul. But I'm sure if we take a mini poll, there'll be, there, are, there are more women than men who would be for this marital rape um, law being in place. What do you say? I agree with you, Brother Julian, but I think that we need to pick up our Bibles and see whose bodies we are and whose belong, have rights to our bodies and who does not have right to our bodies. It's not the government. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, now concerning the things we are, they have written into me, that apparently that Paul had the same problem in his day. And Paul began, he wrote down what the problem was being confronted in his day, like we have today, 2,000 years later, amazingly. And what he said, it is not good for a man to touch a woman. And that's good, good counsel, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Because most women are aroused by the touch and by the fine words and sensations and all these sorts of stuff. And you know, by you touching a woman, things begin to, like someone said, you st you're starting an engine, you're not ready to go for a drive if you're not married. Because he continued by saying, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. And let the husband rent his wife do benevolence. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife had no power over her own body. That's 1 Corinthians 7 verses 4. Did you get that? The wife had not power over her own body, but the husband. 
And if you think he was being biased, he said, likewise also to the husband had no power on his own body but the wife. So he gives a balance here. He said both bodies, the wife body belongs to the husband and the husband body belongs to the wife. But do we want this counsel today? Do we really want it? That's 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1 to 4. The Apostle Paul made it clear that don't touch the woman, young man. And if you want to touch, get married. Because it's better to marry than to burn. And he said, let the husband rent his wife due benevolence. Give her what she needs and likewise she gives him what he needs. But not today. Women want to say no. Even some men, God forbid, want to say no. But are they right in the eyesight of God? Be assured that when you went to the altar and said, for better or for worse, tell dead to aspire. The Holy Spirit was there taking an accurate record of every word you said, reading the intents of the heart. And now maybe a year later, or maybe a day later, God forbid, or maybe two days later, you say, no, no, this is my body, you're not getting none of this. Ladies and gentlemen, be sure your sins and your actions will find you out. But Brother Paul, what if the wife or the husband does not want, for whatever reason, to involve themselves in that type of relationship at that particular time? What then? Uh, 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 is the Bible saying that he or she cannot say no? No, Brother Joel. Once again, the Apostle Paul lays out a good balance in the next verse of First Corinthians 7, verse 5. He says, Defraud or deceive ye not ye one another, except it be by consent or permission or approval for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. Did you get that? And come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incon... In, for, not, for your incon... Con, con, Incontinency. If you are incontinency. So what did, what did the devil, I mean, what did Paul say? That if you stay away from each other for a long period of time, the devil can tempt you for incontinency. And what does the word incontinency mean? Or incontinent mean? It's for a lack of self, se sexual control. A lack, lacking resistance in, se in sexual matters or engaged in premarital sex or extramarital ext ext sexual affairs. And that's exactly what's happened. Whenever the husband or wife begin to Play the fool, I may want to say, because I mean, you can't be in your normal senses and, and be playing this game with each other that you want to say no. And the Apostle Paul made it clear that before you say no, you must first agree to this no. I mean, if all is well with your body, and then I, I may add right here, isn't God good that um, there's a terminology in the, in the domain, you might have heard it before, that a lady stays ready, but a man <laughs> has to get ready? Think about it for a moment. God knows what he's doing, and most men are, are sexually driven by what they see. When on the other side, a woman is stimulated by the kind words, the, the nice gestures, and all sorts of stuff like this. But he designed the woman in such a way that even if she's not ready, before play, she can get ready. You know what I mean? When the man on the other hand has to get ready. So why is it more women are saying no to the situation when they don't have to say no? And then on the flip side, he even did something else. He had what you call men, um, the period situation. Right, but it comes around for four days or five days or seven days, and, and, and every man in his right mind does not go down that road. And even then, the Old Testament says that during that period, the woman should be left alone. You know what I mean? So God covers all the grounds, and then after that period is over, you're ready for business once again. But some ladies still say no. And then God forbid, even some men, um, after the lady, because you know, there, there are some, I understand there are some ladies that after that is over, they look for a time for them and their husbands to get together, you know, in order to do what it is they need to do. What if the brother Paul? What if the husband or wife believes that either spouse is being unfaithful? What 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 else should they do? What should they do in that kind of situation? Here again, there's another reason, brother Julian. A lot of people like to say, well, like, they say no because they believe the husband is being unfaithful or the wife is being unfaithful. You know, well, God has given some men that call themselves private detectives. They, I mean, these 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 gentlemen who are who are who are blessed with this gift. I mean, they're really good in, in putting the things together. You know what I mean? If you think your husband is being unfaithful or you think your wife is being unfaithful and this is the reason why you're saying no, then you get a private detective. God forbid, I mean, and God forbid that, you know, after he's done his investigative work, that it proves to be, yes, your husband or wife is truly being unfaithful. And then even then, if they find him to be unfaithful, God forbid, this has to become a reality. But Matthew 19, 19, Jesus left that stone not being unturned either. He said, and I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife except it be for fornication and shall marry another committed adultery. And whosoever should marry her, or him, you might very well say, who have put away for adultery, they also have committed adultery. So Christ has put something in place that after the private investigator have done their investigative work, or after you yourself have taken upon yourself to do your investigative work, and you cannot forgive the husband or the wife because they have extra total marital affairs, Jesus says, then you can put them away. You are free to get a bill of the washman. Show in the cross.